So dear Sangha, um, let us come back to our breathing. Breathing in, I bring my mind back to the body in the present moment. Breathing out, I enjoy present moment. Present moment, enjoy. We listen to three sounds of the bell. So dear respected uh, teacher, dear noble Sangha, dear friends uh, from online. So today, uh, Sunday, 27th of December, the year 2020, um, we are at the, in uh, Ocean of Peace Meditation Hall at Deer Park Monastery for the Day of Mindfulness. And today, uh, we're still in the rain retreat. Uh, we are in the two-thirds of the rain retreat, 2020 and 2021. And I'm feel, uh, sitting here, I feel kind of nervous. Uh, for a long time, I didn't have a chance to offer a sharing from the big Sangha, but also today online too or the friends from out, out there. Uh, I realized that uh, in three or four days, we will uh, come to the end of the year 2000, and then the year 2021, 2020, and then we'll come in 2021. And uh, the year 2020 is so quick, uh, for me, uh, passed so quick. I remember uh, we from Luklik Monastery, um, we closed our monastery from uh, late February or March. And then we closed monastery before the, when we have a first uh, pandemic. And right now already at the end of the year. Um, so look back to the year 2020. Uh, we need to breathe very deeply uh, to realize that the year of fear, the year of a lot of difficulties, the year uh, with a lot of suffering. Uh, so 
So what we have learned, what we have, what have we uh, experienced about this year? So for uh, ourselves, three or four more days at the end of the year 2020 is opportunity for us to look deeply about this before the year 2021 come in. We uh, usually we want to look for the wonderful future. We want to look for the future that is happiness and safe and uh, joyful and successful things happen in the future. And in this year, all of us have that tendency to look for 20, year 2021 with hope, uh, happiness, safe, security, love, and uh, peace. Because come back to the present moment, uh, right now in this year, too much fear and too much suffering too much difficulties, we want to run away. We want to pass the year quickly. So that's also in my heart, the tendency that's still there. So the topic today I want to share uh, about the original fear and original desire. Uh, actually for myself, I prefer to talk about joy and <laughs> joy and happiness more than fear and desire because uh, uh, inside of myself, I already have a lot of fear, uh, nervousness when I sit up here. So I have a tendency to speak kind of too fast and not clear. My English is kind of uh, not my first language. So anyway, so I, I I realized that my habits, uh, uh, yeah, I, I listen to myself, I never accept, I never feel content with myself. Like what I, I need to grow a lot. So breathing in, I also look back to myself for what is the good things about 2020. Uh, in this year, I, with my brothers from Brooklyn Monastery, we have a chance to come to Brooklyn, to, from Brooklyn to Deer Park for uh, three months uh, during retreats. And we have opportunity to come to, to practice together and we build the brotherhood and sanghahood. And I feel that's so lucky uh, to, uh, to be alive and come back to the mountain again. Uh, the rock, the mountain is so beautiful. I enjoy practicing Qigong everywhere, on the rock, on the mountain. Uh, three years, three years uh, away from Deer Park Monastery, when I come back, I feel more at home. I feel cherish the land, this land, and uh, I can uh, refresh my spiritual energy. So uh, come back to the original fear and or or original desire that I want to share today. Uh, first of all, um, yeah, the year, you know, what have been what have we been go through actually a lot of fear and a lot of uh, difficulties and suffering in our hearts, in our mind, over the places. We, we locked out again. We, uh, we have a lot of like, uh, you know, uh, this morning we hear that uh, uh, more than eight, uh, 80 million people like uh, the cases of uh, yeah, virus, uh, COVID positive, and more than uh, 1.8 million people 
die from the uh, from the beginning until now by the pandemic. That is so scary. Huh? That's so so fearful. So in the Buddhism, when we look at to the fear, to the desire, uh, our teacher Thay in Plum Village encouraging us to look to see when we have a very first time, when we have very first fear and desire in our life. The contemplating about the baby who was born, the first man who was born, the stories about uh, the mother, uh, the time that mother had pregnant uh, nine months, and the moment that the baby was born. That image, that moment, we need to contemplate a lot. And I have been contemplating about that also during this time. And pay our teacher um, told us a lot about this story, this kind of experiences. So the moment of the mother, when uh, when the baby was born, and we cut the uh, umbilical uh, umbilical Court, right? Umbilical cord? Yeah. So we cut that umbilical cord and the baby uh, completely separate from the mother. But before that, the womb, the baby in the womb of the mother, that's we call in the Asian tradition, we call the, in the, in the palace of child, uh, child uh, the palace of child, like a tự cung, in the place that you feel very, comfortable and safe and uh, uh, very uh, happy what the mother eats and the, the child receives the food and the energy of the mother embraces the child. Uh, during the nine months, uh, the baby felt inside of uh, mother's womb so comfortable, so good, but suddenly the moment that the baby was born, and the, the action of cutting the umbilical cord and the baby separate from the mom, from the mother. And that moment, the moment of uh, birth and death, the moment very dangerous, uh, the baby, uh, some baby can cry, some, some of them cannot cry, and they cry and they take uh, the baby takes the first breath and then he cries very loud. The baby felt very strange. Uh, the outside space, no one there for him. Uh, everything com completely very new. That's why the baby feel very fearful feel very uh, scared. But if the baby doesn't, doesn't take the first breath, he could die. So the fear, the fear of death actually happening in that, that brain of the baby. Because the baby completely knew in the world that so strange, so hurt, so painful, with with the area that the oxygen, uh, the liquid still in his nose, and he, he feel a lot of pain, he needs to breathe, and then the liquid can come out, and the lungs can breathe, and he cried because it's so painful. So anyway, the moment that uh, uh, if we don't ask our mother, tells us, maybe we don't know about that moment, we cannot remember. But that moment actually first, very first time in the human's life, fear manifested, fear of death. Because the baby fear that he cannot breathe, 
And he cannot breathe, and he could die. So our original fear is the fear of, of death, of dying. And uh, also in that moment, because he struggled, the baby struggled a lot. That's why he desired to, to survive. He do, he do whatever to survive. He shake his body, and he make the liquid uh, come out from his nose. And he just try to cry. He try to breathe. Uh, he try to, to move around. And the mother come to embrace her, embrace him. And, uh, and the people, the, uh, all the uh, siblings of, of the family come to offer a hug. And that kind of hug is like love. So desire to survive, desire to love. That is the first desire born in that moment. So actually, I just share again what Thay, our teacher, uh, already shared a lot to the Sangha. So now today, our, uh, uh, you know, we experience again this year the fear of death again where we're going up. The pandemic, the people church earth. The people uh, harm us. And we want to protect ourselves, look like a baby in the past. Uh, we afraid to die. We are afraid to be positive in a in a pandemic. That's why that kind of tendency is very normal, like a continuation of the fear that we had for the first time when we was born. So uh, this kind of experiences, uh, as the meditators, as the practitioner, we need to look deeply to see that the fear and the desire in ourself, in the human's body, in the human's mind, can happen anytime, anywhere. And uh, just only continuation of the moment that we're born. But when we are the practitioners, we need to look deeply to see that uh, the roots of the fear, the roots of that desire, the original fear and desire that's come from, come from where we were born already. But you know, that moment when the baby is born, he cries and he struggles a lot. But the mother and father, when we hear the cries of the baby and they feel very happy, they feel very happy because the new life is appear, new lives manifested, new body manifested. But that cry not happen is mean dangerous. So maybe that fear, that cry contain life. Some insights in there, something in there contain life. Baby cries, but mother and father feel so much happiness, so much love because the baby is safe. He can cry, he can make, he can make the first breath. But when growing up, we don't remember that anymore. The first breath, very important. The breathing, the breathing, the crying, the laughter, fears, happiness, everything is our life is there is meaning about that. So we come back to ourselves to breathe, to remember that moment. The moment of fear, first time, when I saw the moments of life manifested. The moment of the baby's cry, when I saw the moment that mother's father's laugh and smile and happy because life Manifested, we listen to one side of the bell.
So dear Sangha, I still feel nervous. <laughs> Tell a story and I share. I, uh, uh, there is a sutra that I want to read about five uh, paragraphs about the sutra on uh, sutra on transforming violence and fear. And this sutra, um, Buddha taught us about the way that we can transform and look at very deeply in, into our fear. And because of fear, violence manifested. And the fear and violence uh, made, us, uh, made us suffer so much in our life, overwhelm us. And uh, because of this uh, violence, happen from our actions, our, our speech, and our mind, uh, our thoughts, and our actions, bodily actions, and harm people, and create suffering to the people. And in these sutras, we talk about the sharply uh, pointed knife in the hearts of the human, in ourselves. So uh, I want to, to read uh, the, the sutras, the five paragraphs, and after I read this, I also tell you the story about the, based on this story and the Buddha uh, uh, thoughts about these sutras. So this goes on transforming violence and fear. So these sutras, also the name of uh, uh, is uh, the sutras on complete uh, teaching. It's meaning complete teaching, uh, number 16. Please listen and observe to understand how. From a peaceful and secure situation, People have brought societies to the present situation. Cortison full of terror and violence. How have past generations behaved for the condition to become like this? I would like to talk about this dilemma and share how I was able to let go of my fearful state of mind. People in the world experience one suffering after another. Like fish living in a pond that is driving up day by day. In a situation of suffering, violent thoughts easily arise, and people in their ignorance seek to relieve their suffering by terrorizing and punishing others. The whole world is burning with violence. In the ten directions, all is in chaos. There is no a place where is real peace and security. People see themselves as superior to others. Few know how to let go of passion. In their ignorance, they continue to hold hatred and ignorance in their hearts. Bodying themselves in this state of mind, they bring themselves more misunderstanding and suffering. I have looked deeply into the state of mind of unhappy people, and I have seen pointed knife. Because they do not see that sharply pointed knife in themselves, it is difficult for them to deal with suffering. The pain caused by the sharply pointed knife lasts a long time and does not change. As they continue to hold on to the knife, they fill the world with their suffering. Only when they have the opportunity to recognize and remove the knife from their hearts will suffering cease, and they will have a chance to stop. So dear Sangha, 
so this is the sutra that I mainly I want to share this morning, just only first part. And this sutra, uh, the Buddha taught us 2,600 years ago. But when we read these sutras, the view is the year 2020 of, of ourself. Violence, pandemic, social injustice, fear, sufferings, disaster of nature, the storms, environment suffering, everything is in the year, this year that we face. Especially the people judge one another. And it seems like in our hearts, something we look, we, we can see anger, fear, violence. And the Buddha said that sharply pointed knife hidden under their own suffering. So there is a story that uh, the story called, uh, about the story about the king, Vyaru Daka. So based on these stories and the Buddha uh, offer these teachings become the sutra, this sutra I just read. So uh, the, the, the king uh, Vyaru Daka, he is the son of the, the king uh, Prasen, uh, Prasenachit, the Vubhatinak. So the, um, the king uh, pra uh, Prasenachit, he came, he, he of, he's the king of the, the country Gosala. So one year he came to uh, Kapilavastu, where is the kingdom of the Siddhartha, our, our Buddha. But in that time, the Buddha already uh, uh, ordained, and he already become, he becomes, uh, became a Buddha already. So in that time, in uh, Kapilavastu, uh, the King Mahana is the, the cousin of the Siddhartha. So in that year, uh, the King uh, Pasenachit, he, he saw the uh, very beautiful servant lady, uh, from the, the kingdom uh, Kapilavastu, and he, he felt in love with her. So he asked to bring her, a servant, to back to the Kosala, and both of them uh, got married. And later on in the year, later something, and he gave, um, yeah, he has a son, and that son is a Viru, uh, Viru Daka, yeah, Votiluli. So the prince uh, Votiluli. So when he was um, a Virudaka, when he was eight years old, he came to uh, Kapilavastu to learn archery, to learn archery um, so that can come back to the, the, the Kosala, the kingdom, to, yeah, to be a, a king later. So in that year, um, you know, in the India, in that year, the, the discrimination of caste system could be very strong, in that time, very strong. And, uh, and in that time, there was, uh, uh, in the kingdom of uh, Kalipavastu, uh, have a very beautiful meditation hall. And uh, in that place, very sacred place. So no one, not like, no one can come there except Buddha and uh, the, the king. So usually that meditation hall, the place for the Buddha, uh, came to offer Dharma talk to visit uh, the kingdom, the Khalifa Vastu. So the uh, eight years old, uh, Prince uh, Vyaru Daka, he was very uh, curious. So he just want to come there to, to see, to make a joke, to play around, to make a mess. So anyway, so in that moment, uh, the, the um, the, all the people in the kingdom of Kalifastu, uh, the culture group, the people like uh, culture, right? Culture. Yeah. They came to see, it, they get very angry because the place that uh, very forbidden, no one can come. But that uh, uh, baby, eight years old uh, prince from the other country, Kosala, he came. 
And that moment, the group of culture came and they get angry and they say like this, Hey, who are you? Who are you to dare to come here? This place is just for the Buddha come. And just for the king come first, you are not allowed to come first. Who are you dare to come here? You are just a son of a servant. So in that kind of uh, conversation look like very discriminate, discriminates the caste system. So that baby, that prince, he got very angry, he got very shocked. And he closed himself. So, uh, so he come out. And when he left the country, and all the cultures said that uh, not pure anymore. So someone, the low caste system come already. So they do the, the ceremony to clean the meditation hall. And also they have very harsh uh, words to that, uh, uh, that uh, baby, that, uh, I mean, that child. So the Viru Dhaka, eight years old, he come back to uh, Kosala with that kind of angry mind. And he thought, when I become a king, I will come back here, destroy you, all this kingdom. And that kind of moment, the violent thoughts arise. And that violent thoughts stay in the thoughts until years later when he become king and the king, uh, his father passed away. He bring all the people, destroy the kingdom of uh, uh, how can we say, Kapila Vastu, yeah. So the story is, uh, the Buddha tell, a uh, um, Buddha told us. So based on these uh, stories, and the, this sutra has manifested, and he talks to the monks and nuns. So we are very be careful, huh? the way that we talk, the way that we speak. So in our daily life, what means a sharply pointed knife in our hearts? What does it mean? When we get angry because someone says something to us, someone judge us, someone have a mindful, uh, unmindful speech, discriminates us, that kind of words, that kind of actions, stay very deeply in the child hearts, in our vulnerable, vulnerable hearts. But we don't know how to manage it. We don't know how to practice with that. And that becomes the block of suffering. And stay too long, and that kind of block suffering, the Buddha said that, under hidden that kind of suffering, that is a sharply pointed knife that we ready to punish people. That's why in the suttas there is sentence say like this: In the situation of suffering, violent thoughts easily arise, and people in their ignorance seek to relieve their suffering by terrorizing and punishing others. And I think this is what happened in this year. A lot, a lot. We belong to this group. We want to punish the other group. We belong to that group. We want to say bad things about this group. And over and over again, we make our sharply pointed knife grow very deeply in our hearts, and we cannot manage it. So let us recognize it. Is there any suffering? Is there any fear in our minds? Do you think that you want to punish anyone? So let us breathe deeply, listen to the bell to recognize what is our hearts, what's in our mind what we are fear about.
Dear Sangha, uh, hopefully I don't bring you uh, in the realm of stress and fearful because we look to this situation. Because for me, it is real. So uh, in this winter retreat, I also uh, have a tendency to come back to myself, to take care, uh, to practice. So uh, I invite my father uh, to enjoy winter retreat with me. I have, a, I have a, a picture of him. So he's the one that, for me, is a hero. He's the one that I love so much. When I think about him, the positive thinking arise. When I think about him, love grows. Because when the way that he lived and the way that he inspired me to ordain, to become the uh, beautiful one. Uh, so when I have a lot of fears, uh, have, when I have a lot of suffering, I, I think about someone that I love. And especially in this winter retreat, I, I ask him, uh, in my mind to enjoy winter retreat with me. So whenever I sit down in my room, I sit with him, I ask him to sit with me. So we, we, when I do that, I feel more strength in my heart. I feel more warm in my heart. So uh, I, I, I feel stronger. So, you know, uh, sometimes too much fear, too much anxieties, we overwhelm, we cannot, we cannot do anything. And we want to come back to our roots, come back to our senses, our ancestors. Ancestor teachers, uh, learned ancestors or spiritual ancestors to ask for support. Please practice with us to look in this fear, look deeply into this fear to practice. So I do that uh, during this uh, time. So, uh, one time sister Annabelle, she shared like this, and at the beginning, I don't, uh, I don't believe it, but later on, I, I see, wow, it's something is meaningful, something is uh, good we need to look at. She said that when we say fear, we say clearly fear, fear, and we stop, we look at that, and the fear, we become less. But when we say joy, joy, and we breathe with that, and the joy becomes more. I don't understand at the beginning, but actually later on I understand is why we say fear, fear, and we breathe with that, and the fear becomes less. Why? I think this is what is that. Because when we say fear, we breathe, we look at that, it means we face with the fear inside of ourselves. We recognize. We recognize we have fear. So recognizing is first aspect of practice, to look in our hearts. I feel fearful within. I know I'm, I have fear. I try to recognize I have that feeling. I breathe with that and then accept that. The second we accept, it's okay. And the fear right now is not about individuals or only, but become collective. So the fear that we deal right now in this world, in this year, actually very collective fear. So we need to accept. Uh, First of all, we need to accept, and then we, we feel... Uh, so when we say fear, and we look at that, we break with that, actually, we, we, we already practice, look at that, accept that already. And when we just do recognizing clearly what is happening, fear is there, you break with that, call it by a true name, and you accept what it is, the fear is already less, because you have mindful breathing mindfulness of fear. The mindful breathing is very important. You breathe, you breathe with, uh, you ask your ancestors. Uh, when, when I do sitting, I ask my father, please 
breathe with me. Or we do walking meditation, and we have practiced like this. Our teachers say when we cannot walk because we have so much desires, so much stress, we can do practice like this. Breathing in, I let the Buddha breathe with me. Breathing out, I let the Buddha inside of myself walk with me. So this is a practice. One time, Thay, our teacher taught us we should practice in this way because sometimes we are so lazy. We are so overwhelmed by the fears, by things around us. We invite the Buddha inside of ourselves, the nature of love, nature of mindfulness, nature of enlightenment, awakening. Each of us have uh, that nature. So, the third aspect to practice, to look at to our fears, is embracing. So when we, we do walking like that, breathing in, I let the Buddha breathe with me. So suddenly you think that the Buddha breathes very mindfully and very wholeheartedly. The energy of mindfulness is strong in that moment. And you look like you breathe, and then the Buddha breathes the same time. The energy of mindfulness. So when the energy of mindfulness arises, and that kind of energy we need to cultivate during the time of walking meditation, sitting meditation, and that kind of energy can embrace the fear in our ourselves. And when we have a time to embrace and practice with that, we have a time to stop running mind. That's why we call the, when we're overwhelmed, one suffering after another, our violent thoughts easy to arise. And uh, in societies, people, they discover that every day we have uh, at least more than 50 thoughts arise. And if we don't practice, how can we manage ourselves? So mindful breathing, mindful steps, we walk in and we invite our ancestors, we invite the Buddha, Buddha in ourselves, invite our beloved one to walk with us, to breathe with us, and cultivate energy of mindfulness, love, and that kind of moments we can create the peace and calmness. Look like you have an energy of mindfulness and peace and embrace the fear and anxieties. And we can stop the violent thoughts, no more violent thoughts, because your awareness, your intentions stay with your breath. Stay with mindful breathing and, and mindful steps. So the schedule is very important. We need to practice every day. So I don't know, uh, you know that before the uh, Christmas happened in uh, Deer Park Manasari, we, we had two weeks lockdown. Two weeks lockdown. And we closed everything. But just only one thing, we continue to practice. We sit in online, Zoom by Zoom. It's of us in the room, and we have a base camp uh, schedule. Every day we do sitting meditation, we do meeting, or we have a connection by Zoom. We continue to practice. And the first thing we do, actually, is uh, the COVID team asked us to visualize that we already had two cases of positive uh, virus in our Sangha. But we don't know the others, right? So we need to lock down, we need to have uh, rules, like we quarantine, we practice very heartily, and we accept what it is. We accept, like, uh, look like all of us have virus. We need to practice. So when we accept already, we feel to leave, anybody practice the same. We just follow the Sangha schedule. So every day I do two types of walking meditation. I practice Qigong on the mountains. I do sitting meditation. I have a time to look into my internal world in myself. 
So, yeah, so when we practice, come back to ourselves to recognize that we are made of uh, five skandhas, uh, five uh, aggregates, First, firstly, like uh, body, uh, feelings, perceptions, mental formations, and, and consciousness. So these five elements, five skandhas, when we come back to ourselves, we need to take care. We need to recognize what it is. So we practice look deeply. Practice look deeply is means uh, the four aspects to practice to embrace, uh, continue to, to look at our fear, to transform, and to practice with the fear. Uh, we look deeply to see the way that our body reacts to the people, the way that we have a conversation, the way that we have a, do we practice with mindful speech or unmindful speech, the way that we react to the people, the way that we have a conversation, the way that we take care of the body, and so that you bring something inside your body, inside your mind and you trigger the fear in the heart. And also, you observe your feelings, what you're feeling in that moment. You sit in meditation and you observe the feelings, what you are feeling, unpleasant or not pleasant, uh, neutral or whatever. You recognize what it is. You look deeply in the feelings, why that person says such things, and you feel so bad about that, why that happened. So you have time to look deeply, to look about look the body, the way that you sit, the way that you do walking, the way that you interact with the people, the way that you have a conversation. The people just say something, discriminate you, and you feel suffered. So you look deeply to see why you water that kind of fear and you become this kind of bad situation inside your heart. And look deeply also to see that uh, in our mind, in our consciousness, the fear ourselves and the fear of the people great, uh, the people, the someone that great suffering to you, they into awe. You look deeply to see into awe because they are suffered somehow. You know, in this year, I recognize that it's not only myself have fear, everyone has fear. And this fear, this kind of desires, this kind of, uh, I mean, this kind of worries and anxieties, suffering become the collective, very collective, and the body deals the same things. We need to practice well. We need to come back to ourselves. We need to have a mask. We need to look deeply to see that every day, thousand thousand people die. How do you feel about that? So death, birth, fear, everything is people have the same things to do. So this becomes like very collective. So when you look at your fear, you know that you have that suffering, you have that kind of mind, you want to punish, punishing someone that great you to feel these moments. But actually, when you look deeply to see that person, they also has their own uh, fears. They have their own fears and suffering at the same time. So, when we have time to practice, look deeply to contemplate about the uh, the insights. Slowly, the insights come up, the insights of interbeing and non-self. So you are, you inter are with others. So uh, the compassion arise to see that uh, or original fear for my father, the fear from societies, the violence from my ancestors, the violence from the society, affects me so much. That's why I feel easy to trigger, trigger my violent, violent thoughts, violent actions. 
So have a time to look deeply, very important. Look deeply about practice of non-self, practice of interbeing, uh, practice that uh, our fear is the other's fear. Our suffering is also people's suffering. And that's the practice of the Buddhism, the practice of non-dualistic uh, thinking, and that's right view. That is right view, the mud and the lotus. So when we practice, uh, we look at in ourselves, and from, from that moment to see that the fear, like a, just continue the fear of death, the fear of like uh, fear of the people like punish you, the people judge you, anybody have that kind of fears, and you breathe and you embrace and you sit with that, and that you feel relief. And certainly uh, you can, when you practice more, you can take out the sapling knife of, uh, of your hearts. So, so dear Sangha, I, I talk a lot. I don't know that you can, <laughs> there's something that can, you can get to practice with this. Uh, time is up. Well, I don't know how to end. Smiling, smiling to fear, smiling what it is, accepting what it is. Practice mindfulness every day, uh, do sitting meditation, walking meditation. Practice with the Sangha, very important. The Sangha online, always to come back to look inside your heart. So just only three, four days at the end of the year 2020, I would like to invite you to look deeply inside your heart. Do you have, do you recognize that you also you have this kind of uh, hidden, uh, sharply pointed knife that trigger you to punish someone, to, to touch someone? So you look at in your hearts, what that come from. So look deeply to transform. You look deeply to practice with, uh, uh, yeah, uh, practice with mindfulness, practice with concentration every day with uh, walking meditation, sitting meditation, and then the insights, you understand what, what is in there, in your hearts. And it's worthy to be forgive, it's worthy to love, everybody needs love, and you need to love yourself. Fear, Anxieties and suffering is a, another aspect of life, okay? You're born and one day you die. But how can we live in such a way that you can nourish love for one and another? And when you understand your suffering, you understand your fear, compassion can grow. The insights of internal being, inside of non-self, can grow in your hearts and you can love more people in the world and we can stand as a human being's family at the same fit, uh, on the same Mother Earth. So thank you so much for your listening, and I think I have a lot to share, but no time. <laughs> and uh, hopefully my English, uh, you can understand what I, want to sh I, I, I just shared. And, uh, Thank you so much for all listening and wish you a wonderful coming year. <laughs>